The Swift Programming Language Book, 5.6 edition, copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Subscripts. Classes, structures, and enumerations can define subscripts, which are shortcuts for accessing the member elements of a collection, list, or sequence. You use subscripts to set and retrieve values by index without needing separate methods for setting and retrieval. For example, you access elements in an array instance as some array index and elements in a dictionary instance as some dictionary key. You can define multiple subscripts for a single type and the appropriate subscript overload to use is selected based on the type of index value you pass to the subscript. Subscripts are not limited to a single dimension and you can define subscripts with multiple input parameters to suit your custom type's needs. Subscript syntax. Subscripts enable you to query instances of a type by writing one or more values in square brackets after the instance name. Their syntax is similar to both instance method syntax and computed property syntax. You write subscript definitions with the subscript keyword and specify one or more input parameters and a return type in the same way as instance methods. Unlike instance methods, subscripts can be read-write or read-only. This behavior is communicated by a getter and setter in the same way as for computed properties. The type of new value is the same as the return value of the subscript. As with computed properties, you can choose not to specify the setter's new value parameter. A default parameter called new value is provided to your setter if you do not provide one yourself. As with read-only computed properties, you can simplify the declaration of a read-only subscript by removing the get keyword and its braces. Here is an example of a read-only subscript implementation which defines a times table structure to represent an n times table of integers. In this example, a new instance of time table is created to represent the three times table. This is indicated by passing a value of three to the structure's initializer as the value to use for the instance's multiplier parameter. You can query the three times table by calling its subscript as shown in the call to three times table six. This requests the sixth entry in the three times table, which returns a value of 18 or three times six. Note, an n times table is based on a fixed mathematical rule. It is not appropriate to set three times table, some index, to a new value. And so the subscript for times table is defined as a read only subscript. Subscript usage. The exact meaning of subscript depends on the context in which it is used. Subscripts are typically used as a shortcut for accessing the member elements in a collection, list, or sequence. You are free to implement subscripts in the most appropriate way for your particular class or structure's functionality. For example, Swift's dictionary type implements a subscript to set and retrieve the values stored in a dictionary instance. You can set a value in a dictionary by providing a key of the dictionary's key type within subscript brackets and assigning a value of a dictionary's value type to the subscript. This example defines a variable called number of legs and initializes it with a dictionary literal containing three key value pairs. The type of the number of legs dictionary is inferred to be string colon int. After creating the dictionary, this example uses subscript assignment to add a string key of bird and an int value of two to the dictionary. For more information about dictionary subscripting, see accessing and modifying a dictionary. Note, Swift's dictionary type implements its key value subscripting as a subscript that takes and returns an optional type. For the number of legs dictionary above, the key value subscript takes and returns a value of type optional int. The dictionary type uses an optional subscript type to model the fact that not every key will have a value and to give a way to delete a value for a key by assigning a nil value for that key. Subscript options. Subscripts can take any number of input parameters and these input parameters can be of any type. Subscripts can also return a value of any type. Like functions, Subscripts can take a varying number of parameters and provide default values for their parameters as discussed in variadic parameters and default parameter values. However, unlike functions, subscripts cannot use in-out parameters. 
A class or structure can provide as many subscript implementations as it needs, and the appropriate subscript to be used will be inferred based on the types of the value or values that are contained within the subscript brackets at the point that the subscript is used. This definition of multiple subscripts is known as subscript overloading. While it is most common for a subscript to take a single parameter, you can also define a subscript with multiple parameters if it is appropriate for your type. This example defines a matrix structure which represents a two-dimensional matrix of double values. The matrix structure's subscript takes two integer parameters. Matrix provides an initializer that takes two parameters called rows and columns and creates an array that is large enough to store rows times columns values of type double. Each position in the matrix is given an initial value of 0.0. .0. To achieve this, the array's size and an initial cell value of 0.0, .0 are passed to an array initializer that creates and initializes a new array of the correct size. This initializer is described in more detail in creating an array with a default value. You can construct a new matrix instance by passing an appropriate row and column count to its initializer. This example creates a new matrix instance with two rows and two columns. The grid array for this matrix is effectively a flattened version of the matrix as read from top left to bottom right. Values in the matrix can be set by passing row and column values into the subscript, separated by a comma. These two statements call the subscript setter to set a value of 1.5 in the top right position of the matrix where row is 0 and column is 1, and 3.2 in the bottom left position where row is 1 and column is 0. The matrix subscripts getter and setter both contain an assertion to check that the subscript's row and column values are valid. To assist with these assertions, matrix includes a convenience method called index is valid row column, which checks whether the requested row and column are inside the bounds of the matrix. An assertion is triggered if you try to access a subscript that is outside the matrix bounds. Type subscripts. Instance subscripts, as described above, are subscripts that you call on an instance of a particular type. You can also define subscripts that are called on the type itself. This kind of subscript is called a type subscript. You indicate a type subscript by writing the static keyword before the subscript keyword. Classes can use the class keyword instead to allow subclasses to override the superclasses implementation of that subscript. This example shows how you define and call a type subscript.